Hi, my name is Dave Sylvia from Cooper Stairworks. Uh, continuing our uh, focus on tips and techniques, well, this week we'll be showing the zip boat rail bolt to connect the fitting to a rail. Rail boats have not changed much in the last 200 years with the exception of the new UT rail, zip boat rail bolt. So uh, these are some samples grabbed from rails and you know, on through the years. This is one that was used at the turn of the century. Then I went to a star nut that you hammer in with your nail set to tighten the nut. Then they also had a double. You could use your nail set to hit this, and you could also stick in a, a half inch wrench to tighten it up. Then a, uh, a little half washer was put in uh, to make it a little bit easier so you didn't have to chisel the whole flat to accept that washer. Then it was kind of this reversible little washer here that was uh, invented by one of the companies that made it easier so you didn't have to worry which way this went in the hole nor, nor did you have to chisel. But I think, in my estimation, the one we use here at Cooper Stairworks is the zip bolt rail bolt, which, you know, it's a, a patented gear head system. You can drop this literally on the rail, tighten it up, and you tighten with a five millimeter hex. On the shaft itself, is a seven millimeter hex to, for a socket to fit on. Over the years, there's been all kind of contraptions uh, invented to try to make, make uh, tighten that nut up a little easier. Here's a homemade wrench that was ground down so you could fit in a hole. This is actually one I had from my, you know, my toolbox to uh, ground down so I could tighten up, fit in that hole. Then they came out with. Uh, these different types of wrenches that have been modified. I, I went to the shop and grabbed a couple of wrenches out of people's toolbox and how they bent and contorted different wrenches to, to, to do the job. Uh, the, the other thing is, you know, this is how one of those brand new wrenches work where you have an elastic band that you stick the nut inside the hole and you start it using this band. That, I guess it works, but, uh, you know, as a stair builder, I, all of these things were very cumbersome and, uh, and time consuming. You certainly can put a little bit of glue on the tip of your finger and stick that nut in there and get it, get it going too. As you can see here, it's a very tight hole, that one inch hole, so to try to get that nut inside there and only take very short turns with the wrench to tighten that up uh, is time consuming and frustrating if you cross tread that little piece on there it, it can be horrible trying to, trying to get the job done with the zip bolt rail bolt you have this patented seven millimeter hex uh, right on the shaft itself so there's several ways to do it. off the shelf tools like a, a deep socket to help you drive the, the lag end and a, a socket with a standard driver and a quick disconnect to help drive that in. Your choice of a seven millimeter wrench. Or the old standby, of course, you can use a vice grip to help tighten that up. In the zip bolt stair package, come some printed instructions. But it's the same boring configuration as you used to using any standard rail bolt. You can use this template, just cut that away. Gives you the depth of the holes, uh, what diameter bits to use. But it's the same quarter inch hole for the lag end, same three eighths of an inch clearance hole, and same one inch hole for that where the head goes into. You fold on the line that it tells you to. Stick it right on top of your rail, centering this little guideline. This is set up for a 6010 style profile, but any profile you can use this template on. Set it in the center. Use an awl or a nail, screw. Mark your two centers that you have here. You can do that right on the fitting too.
that same center on the fitting is the same one as here, whether it be a, an inch and uh, three eighths of an inch or quarter inch. After you mark it with the awl, I normally take a little pencil and make that mark a little clearer, you're all set to start to drill. Now, I always drill a one inch hole first. If you don't, uh, when you drill this one, there's a possibility you lose the center down the bottom and you'll get an oblong hole. So, uh, the hole needs to be an inch and three eighths of an inch deep. And all I've done here is on a spade bit, put a piece of tape again, guiding my inch and three eighths down. Uh, since it, you know, when, when doing all this, I always use the quick disconnect. It just makes things so much easier. Okay, now I'm going to change the bit to my 3 8 clearance hole. Again, quick disconnect is a great tip in itself, making that investment. I'm going to get on my center. If you don't have a steady hand when you're drilling, another little tip that you could use is cut off a piece of the rail, mark it where it's supposed to, get that same profile right on there, and that helps you guide that into the rail, so it helps it keep it nice and straight. And it works for quite a few uh, times, but it certainly can help that get in there nice and straight so you're going in at the proper angle. I'm going to switch that bit now over to a quarter inch where the lag side goes into the easement in this case. I'm going to find my center that I darkened up. And I'm going to Again, if I wanted to, I could have used a sliver to help line that up. So I'd make it easy to draw a perpendicular hole if you need that. The next thing you do is to take the zip bolt, the hex drive, and I'm going to start this off at least with power. Change this. And I'm going to start the drive. Another way, as I mentioned, you can use a ratchet. You can use a wrench. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to the 5mm hex bit. And here's the great thing about, is another one of the great things about zip bolt. Okay, you can drop that, you apply the glue like you normally would when making a joint onto both faces. Bring your two pieces together, and drop that head. See that slotted head? You don't have to separate uh, the two pieces of wood. Right down onto that shaft. And then use power to tighten it up. And just make sure you align that properly and then you sand to, to finish end bunking. Now there are many ways to tighten that up. Here I'm showing you with a small ratchet handle. I bought a T handle at the local hardware store. A tight fit on a gooseneck, you might want to use a 5mm Allen wrench. Or I bought this at a, at a shop right down the street. It's a little ratchet handle, T handle for tight, for tight fitting. There's all types of, that's what I like about the Zippo. Not as only is it easy to, to use, uh, what I think much easier to use than a regular rail bolt. You have so many ways you can tighten and do things all store off the shelf, no special tools at all. The really nice thing about in tight corners or, you know, the, the head just fits right on top of the end. And you put under power, you just tighten that down. On a gooseneck, if you're setting up a rail, uh, you know, if you need to remove a fitting, you want to make an adjustment, it's that quick. Then you get it to put it back in, you slide that slotted part of the head over the bolt, and you tighten it back up again. So when you're dry fitting a rail, it makes that so much easier. 
So that pretty much concludes this segment of tips and techniques using a Zippo railroad. Um, your next rail system job that you have to put together, try it. I think you'll like it.